Hello TEDx and hello people of 2014. Today, I'm here to share with you a Cinderella-like story about an amazing, unbelievable material from the 22nd and 23rd century known as graphene and its powers. It is so powerful that this material will transform your life and revolutionize everything you know and currently use in your lifetimes forever. Let me begin by first offering a personal promise to treat everyone who listens to this talk, a steak dinner, glass of wine, and a movie every single week for an entire year, every year for life. And by the way, those of you with allergies or dietary concerns, don't worry, vegetarian, kosher, halal, and gluten-free are available. <laughs> so we're gonna begin by talking a little bit about graphene. Two-dimensional, atomically thin layers of graphene actually stack up and make graphite. And graphite is a material found in pencils that you don't use anymore today. Graphene is extremely flexible. It is more electrically conductive than the copper you know about, and it is stronger than diamonds and steel, yet it is extremely lightweight. I share with you, if you look at this photo here of the graphene that I placed on top of the flower. See, the graphene is the size of a small stone, and yet it is so lightweight that it is actually able to float in the air and that's why it's able to be suspended on top of a flower. Now, how many materials do you know that is so strong that's able to do that, become so lightweight? Only a material from the future. So two-dimensional, extremely flexible conductivity, strength, and lightweightness. This is your answer for the future, for all people of all nations, young and old, rich and poor, Disabled and non-disabled from every walk of life. It is the answer for the hope for the future of a better day, for positive change. And so something negative about graphene is that this material is so amazing, and yet it's not scalable. It's not economically feasible. It has largely remained within academia because it's so interesting. They've spent the last 10 years studying its properties. It was discovered in 2004, first time known to humans. And then in 2010, it was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. So it's very real. But the problem is it's so interesting that they kept studying about it. And the other problem is in education, our education teaches us about the past. And so how do we use the past knowledge to work with the material from the future? And when scientists tried to do that, it became the Achilles heel that failed on the applications. Remember how I said that graphene atomically thin layers lead to graphite? Well, what they do is they put the graphene inside the application, and when they're done, they press on it. And when they press on it, they make graphite, and thereby destroying the properties of the graphene. So for the past 10 years, we're in 2014 now, there have been no noteworthy commercial applications. And to make matters worse, graphene, in April of 2008, was known as the world's most expensive material on this planet. It was valued at $100 million for not a ton, not 100 tons, but actually for a square centimeter. That's equivalent to $1,000 for the thickness of a human hair. So I ask you as global citizens, does that make any sense to you, that such an amazing material that has such excellent properties, and yet I'm asking you, does it make sense to wait until the 23rd century when it no longer matters in your life. So I set on a path to solve this problem. And here's my three-part plan. First is to make graphene scalable and economically feasible. Second is to put graphene into the hands of individuals that don't just reflect on the past and use path method, past methods, but actually embrace the future. Whether it's an individual or corporation or government, it doesn't matter where their borders are, Let's work together. And lastly is to put graphene in something that everyone will understand and know. It will be abundantly available, and it's highly impactful, so that when you see it, it will be beneficial. My first idea was putting graphene into plastics. Because, see, in the 1970s, plastics were everywhere. If you saw the movie The Graduate, you'll see plastics are the future. See, but plastics have a problem. Plastics by themselves are not stronger than steel. And plastics actually release toxins. 
And we all know that. When we burn plastics, it gives off that smell. It's toxic. Today, we actually recycle plastic bottles and styrofoam cups. However, did we know that actually that also releases chemical toxins? Well, some of us know that. And as a consequence, those chemical toxins add up and they accumulate into the environment and the wildlife, and they even cause cancers. Imagine if we could change that. Imagine if we started saying that that was unacceptable to live life and to live the world and operate that particular way. Imagine if we put graphene inside plastics and we never needed to recycle the styrofoam cups and we could use them to build things. Imagine if it was stronger than steel and lighter than the feather. What would happen would be we would have automobiles, aerospace, and building material industries completely transformed within, within our lifetimes, if that was possible. So I share with you several scenarios that become very interesting. Remember that steak dinner, glass of wine, and movie I promised you every week of every year from the beginning of the talk for the rest of your lives? Well, we delivered this way. Today we drive to work in a car that weighs 3,000 pounds, that carries our families or ourselves, and does that make sense? Imagine if that car could weigh 300 pounds. Imagine by doing that, what would happen is every week you'd spend $100 less in fuel consumption. That's your steak dinner, glass of wine, and movie that I promised you. So let's do some math here. It is how many people drive a car in the United States in this country alone? It comes out to be actually 60% of the 300 million population. That's 200 million individuals. Multiply that by 100 and you generate $20 billion every single week, recreated. And on an annualized level, that's $1 trillion per year. I hope the politicians are listening to this. Because what would happen is this would transform our economies. It would cause the United States alone, using those methods, to actually thrive rather than barely survive. We would be able to solve problems that we otherwise would be faced with just challenges. And so the last thing is graphene and plastics could actually save lives. Imagine if we put a suit on of graphene and plastics. Polyester is a plastic that we have in clothing. Imagine if we could put that in, and then the soldier or rescue worker is able to protect themselves while saving our lives in times of greater natural disaster that are occurring at greater frequencies. Imagine if that could be done. So why am I so motivated to travel the world and fly millions of miles to do this, literally? Why do this? It started when I was very young. My grandfather gave me a name. It was Chu the Great. I kid you not. This was Chu the Great in Chinese. And here are the characters and the meaning of those words. Now, with a name like this, it's kind of oversized. Right? You know, you have, you're size 3 and then, you know, you get, you're given a pair of shoes size 10. It's challenging. And you don't know what to do with this. Especially every time someone calls me by my Chinese name, I'm constantly reminded of this. Have you done great things yet? And what are you going to do about that when you're 5 or 6 or less than 10? It's a problem. Right? So what happened was, you know, you have mentors and friends that encourage you to look at life differently. And one of... One of the very special situations was Dick and Willie. They told me, you know, their names actually meant like, you know, a body part down south. <laughs> right? So Willie would tell me he's so glad he's actually not called Woody because that would mean that body part in action. So I share with you this very important message because it transformed my way of looking at life, a different perspective. It gave me a way to look at things and say, you know, lemons and the lemonade... Let's reach for the stars. And that's what the mentors taught me. And I had this hope about hope for life forever, that possibilities were possible, and that that would become my driving fuel and source. So along in solving the problems for graphene, it came out to be Singapore. See, in Singapore, you have a building in the background with a ship on top. That's their casino. And you have a merline with the head of a lion and the body of a mermaid. In this place, this is where we scaled graphene. We succeeded in two weeks' time with Professor Lo Kamping just by trying the idea of taking raw graphite ore, rocks from the ground from Canada, and doing a single-step reaction and being able to make few-layer graphene. That was done in 2011. What happened was the media would start looking at this story, 
And they also looked at the results of what happened in Rutgers. And Rutgers creativity happened. Professor Thomas Nosker had, was able to work on a plastic bridge in his lifetime and make it recyclable. And during that time, he had no idea on graphene, but together we combined our experiences. And then by 2012, we were able to make plastics in graphene. That was two years ago. 250% greater in tensile modulus than the original material. This impressed the US Navy. And as a consequence, we received a 1.8 million funding. And the $1.8 million funding could allow students to change their mindsets, no longer use the past to work on future materials. Then what happened with this picture is the media got a hold of this, and then they said, Iron Man is coming. See, this whole thing about Stan Lee and the Iron Man comic hero, this is going to happen in our lifetimes. They mentioned Chu the Great, right? And it was really about the greatness of others. We all work together to make this happen. And so hope for life forever, HFF was everywhere. Here are the individuals that supported me and accompanied me on my journey. I hope that you will join me in my journey as well. And now we are at the end of the story where I've delivered my promise about the steak dinner and all these wonderful things. But I want you to know if any of you still doubt whether or not hope is possible, let my story be your answer. That the only doubt we have to fear is the unwillingness to embrace change, unwillingness to let go of our egos, and to embrace the possibilities of a brighter future. Graphene will put dollars in the pockets of our listeners and listeners in the future. It will also put dollars in those I will never directly even meet. But remember, we did this together. Thank you, and God bless.